Oh, hello there, setters of the trends. Yeah, yeah, check that out. Chain issue sorted. I'll be um, talking a little bit more about that later on in this video. But for now, as you can see, bike's loaded. Sorry about the wind noise. Heading out for an overnighter tonight, solo. Uh, usual area, um, hopefully a different spot. It is hot and it is like 35 degrees today. They have predicted thunderstorms for this afternoon. Already saw some forming on the uh, weather radar. As you can see behind me, here there's uh, storm clouds out there. So it could be interesting, but um, I wasn't gonna let that put me off because I've been hanging to get out on this bike for a solo camp for, well, pretty much ever since I got back from the last camp with Steve. Had an opportunity, I'm taking it. If I get a little bit wet in the process, that's fine because it is so fucking hot, as I said. First thing I'm gonna do before finding a camp spot is gonna go and uh, check out a, a swimming spot that I've been wanting to check out. And if it's any good, I'm gonna be having a swim. Yeah, I will just quickly mention too that uh, I'm doing something a little bit different with this video. I don't have a helmet mounted camera at all. This whole video is going to be filmed on this camera, just a grab cam. It is, you know, the DJI Osmo Action. We're going to see how that goes. Anyway, just for something different, because I think the um, the helmet footage gets a bit boring after a while. The main objective is the camping, not the riding this time. I mean, you know, the riding's great, but you guys have seen all these tracks before. Fuck it, top. Not going to whinge or nothing. Anyway, let's go. Hopefully you can hear me, but uh, yeah, there's definitely um, like quite a few storm cells around. Um, you can sort of see like rain pouring down in the distance, then it's gone as, as soon as it appeared sort of thing. So they're not hanging around too long, which is good. But uh, I've been pretty lucky so far. I've had a few spits of rain, just enough to uh, keep me cool sort of thing, but I haven't gotten drenched yet. But anyway, um, not too much further this way to my little swimming hole. So um, hopefully I uh, get there before it starts raining, crack a beer and kick back. Anyway, let's go. Alrighty, so this little spot here is one that I've been wanting to check out for a while. It's obviously private property. Um, you know, there's a gate you've got to come through to get in here, but it's just off the road. But it doesn't say keep out private property or anything. It just says, please shut the gate. Thank you. So, um, I have to assume that uh, they don't mind if people come in here. And there's a couple of fire rings. One over here and one further up there. So obviously people camp here. And, uh, yeah, the, this river's getting a little bit um, weedy and shit again. But, um, it looks uh, alright to me for a dip anyway. Yeah, as, as weedy and shit as it is, at least it's still flowing for the time being, so. There is that. Yeah, it's actually a pretty nice spot here, eh? I reckon. Right, eh? Bordies. Check. Now this little uh, Nelson rig fender bag, I don't know if you guys seen on a, a recent, or on a video a little while ago, I had, I'd gotten two of these and I put one on each. Um, on top of each Krieger bag, just sort of strapped on there. They weren't, didn't really work out all that well. It was a little bit annoying trying to get these undone with those things strapped on there. So I've ended up putting this one, just one of them, on here, just zip tied, zip tied to the mounting points on the Krieger base. And that works really well. It's really handy, easy access there. That bag is somewhat waterproof, and because if you're riding, it's right behind your back, so it doesn't get a lot of water on it anyway. Um, it is really handy for storing my drone in there when I um, bring the drone these days. That's where it goes. Um, it's handy to, to get out. It's easy to access. Also, it's not going to get crushed if the bike falls over. Um, but if I don't bring the drone, like today... Oh, 
It holds six beers, six cans of beer quite comfortably, along with a couple of ice packs. Oh baby, oh yeah. Oh. So I know that some of you guys wonder what the attraction is with going out for a solo overnight camp. Um, I know some of you guys do get it because you do it yourselves, um, but you know I don't know if you could really explain, you know, what it is about it that that's so good. And if you know, I think you're either one of those people that gets it or you're not. Um, but if you haven't tried it, uh, it's definitely worth having a, having a go at it. It's, I think it's it's becoming a bit of an addiction, like I just, yeah, as you know, like life, life kind of sucks these days, and uh, yeah, I think if you, if you can get out and do this by yourself, it, I think it is a good thing for your brain, uh, I love it, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to sort of go a bit further, I just sort of at the moment, being so hot, I just wanted to go somewhere I knew that there was water I could swim in. Um, but yeah, it'd be good to get a bit further away from home. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, out of the house is out of the house. Right, I think I'm done swimming. It's uh, almost five o'clock. It's starting to cool down a little bit now. You know, I'd have to be, <laughs> I'd have to be pretty thirsty to, to drink that water. Even with a life straw or something. <laughs> it kind of smells like cow shit. Immediately sweating balls as soon as I get back into my riding clubber. Anyway, let's go. Well, it's quarter to six, I'm still riding. But uh, how good of a little camping spot would this be? Right on the creek. Sandy, but it's too close to the road. Um, there's a little track off this road that I'm going to check out just a little bit further up. So hopefully there's somewhere up there that'll be good for a camp. I just tried to get up this fairly steep hill behind me off road. Uh, the old uh, back tyre had good grip until it didn't. <laughs> just Got to a spot where it didn't want to hang on anymore and just got it spinning. Anyway, it's done. Alright, I found my hilltop spot, ladies and gentlemen. Took a bit. I was getting a bit of uh, daylight anxiety because I was down in the valley over here and it was getting dark but uh, as you can see there's still a bit of sunlight left up on the hill here so it's not perfect but it's, uh, it's well off the main track really lovely about that were to uh, watch the sun go down through the trees over here and I've also got views to the east for the uh, sunrise in the morning not that I'll be up that early nice little flat spot just here for the tent All right, first thing first you guys should know the drill by now drink them while they're chilled this bag of clothes it's pretty much a staple in my duffel bag it's mostly for winter time 
You know, I've got spare socks, spare jocks, spare t-shirt, hoodie, tracky dacks, beanie, all that sort of stuff. I tell you what, most camping trips, especially in summertime, I don't even, I don't even open it. <laughs> it's just, it's weight and space that doesn't really need to be taken up. Because really all I do is chuck on thongs and my boardies that I've already been wearing, and I just, unless I'm really, really sweaty, I'll, I'll put a different t-shirt on, but most of the time, yeah, who gives a shit? That is obviously the best way to do it. <laughs> I think I might actually peg the bastard out just in case it does storm. Alright, so quickly uh, the bike, the chain, the chain saga. I'll try and make this brief. Um, I've got the stock chain back on there, right? Stock That stock chain I took off at 20,000 k's. It was still fine. I just thought, yeah, the front sprocket was a bit worn. I thought generally bike makers put cheap crap chains on um, bikes when they you know when they make them so i've got new sprockets and a new chain and the chain was an ek chain right uh when it started fucking up or it's it'd been stretching for quite a while it only had 10,000 k's on it but it started stretching a fair while before it got to 10,000. so not real impressed with the old ek chain it was a o-ring or x-ring it was 150 bucks so you know it wasn't a cheap ebay shitty chain but I was kind of expecting to get more than the stock chain. So yeah, I bought a new master link for the uh, the stock chain and whacked that back on and a new front sprocket because, you know, as I said, it was a bit warm. So for like maybe 45 bucks, got me going again. Um, I'll just keep running the stock chain until it starts shitting itself. But um, yeah, as I said, it's it's pretty good compared to the, the EK. It's, it's really good still. Oh, those bugs are loud. The only other difference between this one and the EK, I was actually lubing this one when it was on there before with just silicon spray um, and not really washing it, just putting a bit of silicon spray on there after the bike was washed. Um, with the EK chain I switched, fuck up! With the EK chain I switched to Larnox, Inox Larnox, that uh, lanolin sort of spray. So I've always thought that those sprays that don't dry out sort of get dirt and shit in them and turn into a grinding paste and wear the chain out faster so maybe that's what happened because i know that lanox doesn't really evaporate it it would have stayed on there so yeah i'm going to go back to the silicon spray with this and see see what happens uh, but the other fucking spanner in the works was because i ran with that chain too tight on that last ride only probably for about 5k's before i noticed well, before I stopped and checked it again and saw that it was really tight, um, it fucked out my countershaft seal. So it was leaking oil out of the engine. Um, had to wait for a new countershaft seal from Yamaha. It was like $31 for a fucking rubber seal. Absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, uh, it was very easy to replace. Same as any bike, really. Um, but yeah, and that's fixed the problem. Thankfully, the bearing wasn't... Well, it doesn't seem to be fucked and the um the metal collar that the seal runs on seem to be okay too so yeah so we are back up and running again i don't know if i've showed you guys this yet but <laughs> on that last camp out camping trip with danny at the bull buren when we had that massive fire in the middle of the road <laughs> there was a lot of hot ashes blowing through the air and my ch <laughs> my chair copped it <laughs> it's got Got a few battle scars, but um, still seems to uh, hold up with my fat ass sitting in it anyway. Ah, good as gold, mate. Cut, cut. This is future Josh reporting in from Manambar Gold Mine with a couple of supporter shout outs. I keep forgetting to do them again. I, I was getting good for a while there. I know probably most of you guys don't give a shit uh, who my supporters are, but let me tell you this you should, because without them, these videos wouldn't be happening, and I keep saying it. The money that they generously and selflessly donate to this channel pays for the fuel in my bike, the parts for my bike, the camera gear, all that stuff. 
beer, food, all the essentials. So thanks to all you guys, but uh, the two that I'm uh, shouting out today, they're actually YouTubers. First one's PJ's Motor Adventures. You guys know Paul and Jackie. You've probably watched their channel as they did their big lap around Australia. Uh, Paul on his T7 and Jackie on her WR250R. If you haven't subscribed to their channel guys, I'll put a link you know, in the description and stuff, so check that out. They're an awesome couple, it was so good to meet them, and I uh, really appreciate your support, Paul and Jackie. And the other supporter I'm shouting out today, uh, another YouTuber, is actually Sequoia, who's come on a couple of rides with us back in the day on the little bike. So Sequoia's got a channel, uh, it's called Moto Chick Rider. Um, obviously there'll be links for both these channels in the description guys, but check out Sequoia's channel. Uh, Moto Chick Rider. She does a good video as well and she's recently started doing the solo camping and she's sort of local to the area obviously as well so uh, thank you Sequoia and Paul and Jackie you guys are awesome and uh, anyway back to my past self solo camping <laughs> I can't wait till those cicadas go to sleep. They're fucking loud. Well, trendsetters, it's quarter to eight, and I've actually still got two beers left. I've only drank four of the six that I brought, and pretty much <laughs> I think I've had enough. I think I'm actually going to be taking beers home this time, but um, I am onto the red wine, so you know, I'm not piking out completely. Anyway, the fire's going great. And uh, I think I'm gonna start cooking up my uh, steak. All right, eh? so you guys don't need to see this again. This is the same, <laughs> the same meal I had on that uh, last camping trip with Steve. Steak sanger with onions. Um, this time, the uh, I feel it is still cool because <laughs> it only came out of the freezer at about 3 p.m. So uh, yeah, it's still good. All right, eh? The Beatles are on. Hey Jude, it's nearly midnight. Fire's just about fuck. I'm going to bed. Catch you fuckers in the morning. Good morning. Well, I missed the sunrise by a little. <laughs> um, it's probably about 8 o'clock now. Coffee's good. I had a pretty good night's sleep. Oh, and it didn't rain at all. No rain, no storm, so. I was going to mention the steg pegs, as you guys would know, I'm running. I've actually gone with two rubbers on the steggies. I just thought, what the hell, you know, I've got spare rubbers there, I'll just try it. And really good so far. <laughs> I should have um, I should have tried that before I did my video on the steg pegs, but yeah. Two rubbers, for me, it, it's good. You really, you don't, with the one rubber, you've still got to sort of grip the bike a bit to keep locked onto that steg peg with your boot but with two you can just lean back and your boots go straight onto it and yeah it's a lot easier and so far they like the, the main reason I didn't try two rubbers was I thought they'd get in the way you know when you've got your feet on the ground and you're trying to maneuver the bike you know you, your legs would hit on that but um so far no dramas and uh if you saw the video where I installed the steggies I had a little uh bit of this shit bolted here to tie my bags onto and uh, one of my awesome subscribers Les, Les Moore yeah, so Les suggested using these um, you know they're tie down points that normally are mounted up here on the Tenere 700 um, yeah I took mine off yonks ago to mount the B&B the rack and stuff I had those lying around he suggested using them to tie the Kriegers onto and I was like ah it's all right I'll just stick with my little loops but anyway I when I was, had the steg pegs off to change the rubbers on them to put two rubbers on I thought oh, I'll give it a go I, I dug those things out and stuck it on and <laughs> yeah it's a good idea Les <laughs> I'm here a legend because you don't even have to undo the bag, you like this clip under here anymore. All you do is just hook it on there and then you know, tighten it up, up up here. So <laughs> it's one little thing that's easy, um, time saving, you know. 
So uh, my advice is, uh, if you see Les Moore on uh, YouTube and he gives you some advice, you take that advice and you say thank you, Mr. Moore. <laughs> so good on you, Les. Cheers, man. The only one little downside with that is you need a Torx bit to undo those. I'm not sure what size Torx it was, but um, yeah. My other bolt here, the uh, 5mm Allen key, so I need two tools to take that off. But, um, you know. 20 to 9. Um, I just did a uh, little video on a new Olight product, which you guys will see soon. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, something to look out for. There is um, some huge March flies here. There's not a lot of them. Just the occasional one. There's one right there. He's about to meet his maker. Yes, yeah, it's uh, been another successful camp out. I uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, just um, it's amazing. Uh, you know, well, I find it amazing that I'm able to just sit around the fire listening to music and sipping on red wine until like midnight <laughs> by myself. A lot of times when you go camping, um, you know, as soon as the sun goes down and you've eaten, you sit around the fire, have a couple of drinks, and then it's like, oh. Time to go to bed, I suppose. I <laughs> can go to bed at 7 o'clock or whatever. But, uh, yeah, no. It's good. Drank a fair bit of red wine. Not feeling too bad this morning, actually. But it is hot, man. So, yeah, I need to, uh, need to get packed up and get going. If only reality was uh, as quick and easy as a time-lapse, hey? <laughs> You might have noticed my little Sea to Summit pack tap hanging over here too. Um, I finally decided to splurge on one of these things after having the faithful goon bags bust open in the panniers <laughs> probably three times now and ending up with, you know, apart from everything soaked in there, uh, no water to drink or cook with or whatever. finally decided to get one of these. I think... I've got to say, I think they're worth the 30 bucks or whatever they are. This is a 4 litre one. Hopefully, I mean, it, it made it out here without breaking, so hopefully it's going to be good. Uh, they do seem to be pretty well made. Nice canvas sort of bag. You've got a heavy-duty carry strap up here that you can hang it up with. Anyway, yeah, 30 bucks, one of those. A spare replacement bladder for one. Um, if you want to replace it with a proper one, uh, they're about 8 eight or $9, so... Not too bad. Yeah, you don't really want to be fucking around with water. Uh, it is kind of essential to um, to live. <laughs> you know what? If I find a nice cool creek somewhere today... <laughs> Hot beers! <laughs> Hot beers are better than no beers. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Alright! Did I mention that it's kind of fucking hot? Beautiful morning. Leaving all my worries, I prepare for something new. Whatever it was that held me back, I'm sure it wasn't true. Holding on too long, and unresolved questions hold you down. What could have been a friendly smile has turned into a frown. I'm moving on. I'm not really dressed for Lantana riding, but um, I'm going to see if I can follow this one through. It looks like it joins onto another track and then it should get me back you now on course for home, so we'll see. <laughs> so I'll try and take it easy and not get my arms slashed up, because fuck that. <laughs>
That's what Lantana does to you. Fucking shit. Kind of cool because like normally riding home from the area where I camped I always go through the same fucking track and it's that boring this um, may end up being a different sort of a bit of a detour on the way home so a different track uh, I definitely wouldn't be doing that one again with short sleeves though fuck that um, I want to go that way but I'm just going to go and have a quick look at what's down here first yeah so it's a nice little creek bed <laughs> water in it but it's not flowing tell you what if it's um if it's cool I might jump in anyway because it is hot oh it's beautiful throw those cans of beer in there while I have a bit of a swim yeah I've never been down here before I've never been on this track before I didn't even know it existed um I'm not sure where it goes that way I'll have to follow it one day to see where it goes but uh, if I follow it that way, it should take me back onto my uh, regular route home. You know, I'm going for a dip. Old Tex reckons I'd swim in a muddy puddle given half a chance. Yeah, um, this ain't quite a muddy puddle, but getting pretty close. Oh, the water is cold though, that's lush. So good. It's a bit early for a beer, it's not even 12 o'clock, but um, it's Australia Day today. Australia Day, it's a holiday. Yeah, a lot of people would be a lot more fucking pissed than two golds by this time. Fuck. Oh, oh mama. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm definitely not hot now. Cheers guys, happy Australia Day. Not a bad way to spend it. Right, time to get out of here, see, see how bad this track is, eh? back onto the usual track that was pretty cool i like that not not hugely overgrown a little bit of a few prickles and stuff but yeah lantana wasn't too bad fun track though better than this boring shit <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Slightly different format. Well, pretty much the same shit. Just different camera angles. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks Patreons. Thank you all for watching. Cut!